I have three children with my ex-husband and I left after I had our youngest. The relationship was terrible. He was lazy as all heck and wouldn't work, but he would spend my money, treat me like garbage, etc. So when he left me in the hospital for a week after I had our son and took all my money with him so he could buy cigarettes while staying home playing video games, that was the final straw. Bonus points for him taking my son fresh out of the hospital ICU to meet his mistress. I was unaware of her at that time because they were just friends. I hate him with every ounce of my being and it's no secret. That hatred spiralled out of control when he stopped taking the kids for visitation about a year and a half later, simply because I started dating someone new. He's seen the kids one or two times a year since 2017 and only when his mother has them. There are always six or seven months between seeing them and no contact between us. When I was with my ex, my brother and he got really close, to a point where they would take off for hours on end every single day and leave me with the full responsibility of the kids. We had two at that time, a newborn and a toddler, and everything else. It always caused fights and I would get laughed at for being dramatic. Since he and I split, he and my brother have remained close. Well, back three months ago, my brother needed a place to stay two days a week for work. And since his job is five minutes from my place, he'd been staying with me. He got to the point where he brought up my ex almost every single time he was at my house. The latest issue, however, is the fact that my ex has my brother convinced that I'm keeping the kids from him. Whenever I say that's not true and say that he doesn't want them or answer my texts, my brother retorts with, you need to try harder, those kids need both parents. I'm done being expected to try harder in every aspect of life, so these try harder comments have started making my blood boil, especially when he talks about it in front of the kids. I've told him to stop mentioning that man's name in my house because I was done with the scolding every single day for a situation that he has no business meddling in, and usually he won't stop. So when he came here yesterday and started in about how my ex was so depressed and blah blah because he has no one, I told him again to shut up. I don't care if my ex is depressed to be quite honest, he should be, considering how much of a deadbeat he is. It should eat at him and I'm glad it does. But my brother wouldn't stop bringing it up, so I just told him to leave and that he was not welcome back here. He goes on to say, are you serious? You're kicking me out over words? Knowing I can't get to work unless I'm here? That's messed up. So am I the idiot for kicking my brother out? Neither respect women and both think they will be big time rappers when they grow up. Not the idiot. You didn't kick him out over words. You kicked him out over his behavior. It was not just about what he said, it's about what he did. You must kick him out if he can't or won't respect your boundaries. Don't let him manipulate you with guilt trips. He was warned repeatedly and ignored you. Now his guilt trip is an attempt to emotionally abuse you into him being the victim when he's not. Poor brother, I can't get to work unless I'm here. Please, you could always get to work. You're just salty because your cushy five-minute commute is going away because you're an idiot. Guess you ought to learn to wake up earlier to get to work on time now. There's a reason why those two are so fit for each other. They both have the same thought pattern. Your ex can't see the kids because OP doesn't try hard enough. Now it's OP's fault the brother can't go to work. So everything that's wrong in their lives is somehow on someone else. If he can't keep his mouth shut, he can drive to work from his usual place. Anyone else complaining, send their address to dear brother. Yeah, guess what? Most people have commutes longer than five minutes and do just fine with it. Kicking brother out over words? No, she's kicking you out over actions, bad-mouthing you in front of her kids. If he wants to help the ex, your brother should convince him to reach out and try harder. I'm curious, does your brother know your ex had an affair? It's very likely your ex was buying booze or whatever your bro was into with your stolen money while lying around while you were still in the hospital and having him over for it. Since bro wants your ex to see the kids, stop having them at the ex's parents. They can come over to see the kids. Sue ex for child support and to establish supervised visitation. Ask for supervised pickup, drop off, so it will all be documented when he doesn't show. Now it's time for ex hubby to face the consequences. I, 53 female, and my wife, Abby, 50, have been together for over 30 years and married for 20. We adopted our son, Jack, as a toddler after his parents died. He's now 20. Bringing him up wasn't without difficulties, but he was a good kid. He had good grades and good judgment and didn't cause trouble on purpose. He always loved spending time with us and watching TV with us, and in his teen years, he even began cooking with us and became somewhat of a Gordon Ramsay. 
things changed a bit after we adopted our daughter, pre-tween, Sam. Jack was a teen. She was a troubled kid bouncing around a lot in the foster care system. For a while, he loved her and really enjoyed being around her and showing her that this house was safe, which was basically everything my wife and I were trying to do. I want it to be clear that we never asked him to be a parent. That was our job. He always offered to do things with her and often chose to be around her rather than his friends. He never had to babysit her, but he occasionally did during small emergencies. He seemed slightly annoyed with her, but always told us it was frustrating to deal with her sometimes. Soon after his 19th birthday, he met a girl, 18 at the time, and his personality began to change. He grew resentful of us and of Sam. He'd make these weird or hostile comments towards Abby or me, and occasionally I'd catch him telling Sam about her bio family. I'd always try to shut it down, but he'd make some excuse and go home when I tried to talk to him. I don't want Sam getting in contact with her family. It's a toxic family that's no good and very dangerous for her. Earlier today, my wife and I were speaking to him about his behavior, and he said that his girlfriend told us that we kept him from his family on purpose during his entire upbringing and that adoption was a traumatizing experience that tore families apart. This stunned us since we were always as transparent as we could be. What remained of his family didn't want to talk to him, so we adopted him. My wife explained that we never tried to do that, but he called her a lying witch and told her to shut up and that we're baby snatchers. I immediately cut in and told him to leave and not come back unless it was to apologize. He left, saying that he hoped one day Sam wised up to us lying about her family as well, that we were awful for ripping a girl away from her real family. I don't understand his logic, but he was clearly upset at us for what we did. I wish I hadn't kicked him out so we could have talked it through, but he was just throwing verbal abuse at the woman who cared for him most of his life, and I couldn't watch it. Am I the idiot? Nope, not the idiot. It sounds like you've been saying and doing all the right things concerning both kids. Also, by age 20, he should have much better control over his actions and words. He had no right to talk to you like this. Heck, by the age of six, I knew better than to speak to my parents this way. I don't think you should backtrack at all on the ultimatum. If he gets in touch, you can be relieved or happy, etc. But stay firm on your rule. He still has to apologize and it has to be heartfelt. No throwaway stuff like, all right, all right, I'm sorry. He needs to know why he's sorry and the apology should reflect this. Also, something else might be going on with him. Not an excuse, but maybe an explanation. There's also a general anti-adoption movement. Some of their complaints are valid, for example, removing native children specifically for adoption purposes, but can get ridiculous and extreme with its messaging. Adoption is a much more complex topic than many people feel comfortable admitting. At the same time, OP and her family were not doing anything wrong, and it sounds like he's a case where the system worked well. Your son's girlfriend certainly is on it. I wonder where she got her information. A TikTok video, maybe? It sounds like she wants to isolate and control him. Turning him against his parents, adopted or not, is a great first step. Hopefully, he'll come to his senses soon. Meanwhile, I would keep him away from Sam. She's had enough trauma in her life. She does not need him feeding her toxic BS. My daughter has a best friend who, for the post, we will call Beth. Both are pre-tween females. Some relevant background. I don't make kids food for my kids. They're expected to eat what I've made for dinner, which is often not food that would be considered kid-friendly. As a result, my kids have a wide palate and enjoy eating a variety of foods. My son's favorite food is grilled octopus, while my daughter's is pasta with sea urchin. Of course, there are things they don't like and I don't force them to eat those things, but as a general rule, they must eat what's available. Beth exclusively eats kids' food. Her family has two separate meals every night, something for the parents and something more kid-friendly for the kids, e.g. chicken nuggets, pizza with no sauce, etc. Beth is extremely picky. My daughter and Beth hang out almost every weekend, I had made roasted chicken the first time Beth was over for dinner. Beth's parents hadn't given me a heads up about her preferences. She refused to eat the chicken and asked for goldfish crackers instead. The next few times I tried my best to accommodate Beth's preferences, but something was always wrong with what I made, and Beth would refuse to eat it. For example, I made a pasta dish for my family and served Beth plain pasta because she doesn't like sauce. She still refused to eat because I'd made penne and Beth only eats farfalle. 
I've gotten fed up with Beth's pickiness and have started to arrange the girls' play dates so that they end before dinner time. Beth's parents noticed and asked why I never hosted Beth for dinner anymore. I explained that I couldn't cater to her food preferences. They asked why I couldn't just keep chicken nuggets in my freezer and make them for her when she's over for dinner. I told them I wouldn't do that because I don't want to teach my kids that requesting something different than what they're being served is okay. Beth's parents had some choice words for me after that and are apparently considering not letting Beth hang out with my daughter anymore. Am I the idiot? Ending playdates before dinner works perfectly because it reduces your and Beth's anxiety over food. The parents are angry because their dinner date nights are gone. Now they have to include their daughter. Not the idiot at all, and you know it. Beth's parents are setting her up for a lifetime of suffering and disappointment. Yeah, they're raising an entitled child and you are raising children who will be able to eat when they go out as adults. Unless she has some type of issue preventing her from eating a particular food, she shouldn't get a special meal. Also, groceries are damn expensive. How dare they expect you to buy different extra groceries than you would feed your children to feed their child? As a mom, I so want to believe this isn't real. The you should keep nuggets in your freezer was over the top. As the mom of a kid who's fairly picky, I can honestly say that telling someone else to stock food for my kid never crossed my mind. You are not obligated to keep foods in your house that you do not regularly feed your family just to accommodate your kid's friends. Don't let the other parents make you feel guilty. Beth's parents are really entitled to demand special treatment for their daughter and might not be the people you want around in the long run. Dear husband and I have been together for two years. He and I live in a home that I bought from my mom's inheritance money. His mom always talks about how messy our home is, and although two people are living in this house, she always directs her comments and criticism toward me. She'd even bring it up in front of many people, which constantly puts me on the spot. She also seems to forget that I'm pregnant and still work while her son covers two night shifts every other week. Last week was my final straw. We were gathered at dinner, and she brought up how messy my home was the last time she visited. She lectured me for half an hour about it, then started shaming me for the state of the house. I snapped and told her, It's so ironic and hypocritical of you to keep lecturing me on the state of my house as if I don't live with someone that you raised. She went silent, and my husband stared at me in disbelief. Things got awkward, and the next thing I knew, my husband stormed out and dinner got cut short. We went home and he yelled at me about how I insulted and humiliated him by implying that he was a lazy, dirty bum. He said it was a cheap attempt to get at him when I should have just kept him out of the conflict his mom and I have. He's not speaking to me and he's extremely upset. He went to stay with his brother and has been cold to me for days now, saying I used him as a tool to get back at his mom and that he was innocent and shouldn't have been humiliated like that. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. From my reading, the lazy, dirty bum didn't like being called a lazy, dirty bum in front of the person who raised him to be a lazy, dirty bum. I see no problem with your actions here. And he is right about one thing. He's a tool here. Well, I see a problem. Well, he barely works, he barely cleans, he won't intervene when his mum is unloading on you, and he thinks you should have protected him from her arguing. What exactly are you getting out of this relationship? At a minimum, I'd ban mother-in-law from the house, make a rule that she sees the baby only when you visit her, and make it clear that the minute she starts up with insults, you and baby are leaving. This lady was being at the very least incredibly rude and misogynistic by implying that household chores are your responsibility because you're a woman. The fact that your husband just stood there and didn't care that she was being unfair and disagreeable when he should have stood up and said that 1. It's not his mother's house and 2. He also lives there and is equally responsible for the chores. On top of it all, he's now acting like a hurt toddler giving you the silent treatment. You need to have a very serious talk with this guy. Soon enough, there'll be a baby you need to care for, and he needs to know that he has to contribute and help with taking care of the baby and the house. Hope your husband grows up before the baby's here, otherwise you might be caring for two infants pretty soon. My 18 female dad, 50, habitually drags me places just for an hour, few hours, afternoon, only to stay for a very long time. It's frequent. He doesn't accept me not coming with him. The same thing happened a few days ago. He wanted to go visit some of his friends and insisted I come with him. I told him no, I had an exam early the next day 
so I wanted to stay home and study and go to bed early. He insisted we'd only stay for some coffee and then we'd go and wouldn't accept no. I reluctantly went with him. Left home around noon. It was about a 50 minute drive, so too far to walk back home. I was basically ignored once he saw his friends, so I sat on the couch trying to study from my phone. At three-ish, I asked to go back home and he said we'd leave as soon as he finished his coffee. At four, I asked again and he told me, later. At five, I asked again and he got annoyed and told me we might as well stay for dinner. After dinner, eight-ish, I asked again and he said as soon as he finished his beer. I reminded him that I had to get up at 5.30 the next day so I'd like to go soon. When he got another beer, I left quietly and called a cab. I used his card to pay. I have a second card from his account for groceries and such. I didn't take his. It took him nearly an hour to realize I was gone. He called me and I told him I was nearly home and was going to bed. He was really mad about me leaving without telling him and using his card to pay for the cab since it was a pretty long ride. I just wanted to study and get enough sleep. Am I the idiot? Edit, he wants me with him so often because he doesn't think I'm social enough and sometimes to drive him home so he can drink. If I refuse to go, he guilt trips me, yells or refuses to speak to me. Not the idiot. You're obviously not going to be more social with 50-year-old men when you're an 18-year-old woman. You're the designated driver. You need to express your disappointment that your studies are taking a backseat to him going out. Let him know that his doing this is putting a strain on your relationship with him and it should stop before it damages your father-daughter relationship. OP, you're going to have to learn to say no. If he gets angry, guilts you, etc., you're going to have to learn to live on your own or invent other plans on the spot. Do you want to study? You have a study group at the library. There will be plenty of people you deal with in your life who will attempt to manipulate you, which is what your dad is doing. So stay calm, stay polite, but keep saying no. Don't get drawn into arguments. You're 18, an adult, and you get to decide how you allocate your time.